together listen I know it's I know it's easy to uh, come out of a service like we had this morning and let off the gas and say we'll just cruise through tonight I ain't come to cruise tonight I want to experience him can't nobody say they left any tired than I left this morning but I'll tell you what I, I want another good dose of the Holy Ghost I want God to pour out his presence his spirit on us I want to ask you to come and join we're going to join together and pray and believe and ask God to do it again Amen. That the Lord would do it a second time. That God would. Maybe you, maybe you got full this morning, but I tell you what, I, I just want an outpouring of God. In Acts chapter two, the Bible said that the, that the Holy Ghost was poured out on them, and then in Acts chapter three, the Holy Ghost was poured on them again. And Acts chapter five, I believe it was, the Holy Ghost was poured on them again because they just kept needing it. So let's join up and be friends and love one another and family. He is a good God. Amen. Y'all come on around here and act like you love each other. Don't you wish everybody used dial? Glory to God. Hey, Tim. We're going to pray. Come on, buddy. Glory to God. Woo! Anybody ready for the Lord to pour out his place again? Amen. Come on, Pastor. Hobble on up here. We're waiting on you. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. I've already been asked what in the world happened this morning. I told him I don't know. That's one of them unexplainable things. Amen. But it's all good. It's all good. Looking forward to what God has for us tonight. Brother Roger, would you lead us?
Lord, I pray that we be encouraged, we be strengthened, and we be motivated, and we be re resealed. Lord, revitalize, Father. And I pray, Father, most importantly, that you be magnified through everything that's said and done. Be magnified through the songs, be magnified through the praise, be magnified through the message, and be magnified through every word that's said. And Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, hug a neck. Shake a hand. Love on one another. We'll get started. Yeah, yeah. We worship you, Lord. It's good to be in God's house. It's been good to be in God's house all day long. Praise God, it's good to be in His house. Whew. I still feel Him in the house. Amen. Oh, yeah. There's a sweet spirit in this place. Thank God for the unity, the conformity, the power, the presence, the move of God. As Pastor Roger alluded to in his uh, prayer, people were filled with the Holy Ghost this morning. I, I don't even know who all or what. I don't know what went on. I tell you. I told somebody I felt like I had a hold of 240. Brother Edwin said, I believe you had a hold of 480 this morning. I tell you, he said, I didn't know you could run that fast. Then when the Holy Ghost gets on, you do things you didn't think you could do. The Bible said the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he outran Ahab in his chariot. Amen. You, when the Lord gets on, you can run. I'm telling you. I, lo I look for somebody else to run tonight, but I want you to run in the Holy Ghost. Don't run because you just want to run. Amen. They were picking on me today. They said, I thought Doris was going to take after you. I said, I'd look back and said, follow me, sister. Let's go. Glory to God. I'd have, I'd have let it roll. Amen. Amen. It is good to be in the Lord's house. Let me, uh, I was supposed to do this this morning, but I'm sorry. Let me read a card. With special thanks to all of you, to know you is to know people who are kind, considerate, and thoughtful. To know you is to be grateful for the special things you do. For everything you've done, for being the special people that you are, thank you so very much. I have been overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and support from this church family. I don't know how I could ever say thank you enough for the calls and texts, visits, dinners, child care assistance, and prayers. If I ever doubted where I belong, I am confident in that now. My prayer is that God blesses each of you abundantly and beyond measure, loving Christ, Tabitha Engel. We thank God for what he's doing in her life and going to continue to do. Amen. We don't do this a lot around here, but I just want to wish Sister Glenda a happy birthday. Today's her birthday. I, I told her, I, I told her uh, we were going to bring her up before the church and give her the right hand of fellowship. <laughs> she didn't like that idea. Sister Lisa's is tomorrow. Brother Chan says she's going to be 28 tomorrow. So, and uh, he said he was trying to get some brownie points. And Doris's is Wednesday. She's waiting on me to say it over there. Doris's birthday's Wednesday. I want to make sure I covered everybody. So God bless you. I thank God for, for years in life. Amen. Amen. Yours was yesterday. Sally's was yesterday. Praise God. I'm telling you. God said, I'll give you a long life, longevity. I'm praying that my birthday take care of tomorrow. When was your, yours? Was, yeah, Brother Chris, he, he turns to big 45 Wednesday, Thursday. Something like that. He's old. He's getting old. I know that. I'm telling you. He's above me. I do know that. Happy birthday to all of y'all. Come on, let's give them all a hand clap of appreciation. We love our, love our people. So after the service, if you want to, we all line up and give them right hand of fellowship. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right. I guess between all of us, enough of us lined up, we'd probably account for their years anyway. Amen. You parents, please meet with Brother Chris tonight at the service. He needs to speak with you. Um, and I'll tell you kind of what is concerning, but he needs to talk with you concerning uh, a mission project that I put the youth on. And uh, uh, he'll tell you more about that tonight. I don't want to ruin his surprise. All right. Uh, there's a mission project that our youth are going to take over here at the church, and uh, we're going to look forward to what God's going to do with that. Tomorrow night, CPC fundraiser at Bojangles. Please come out tomorrow night and support that. Uh, support that. 
would encourage you to come out for prayer meeting tomorrow night. God's been doing some great things through our prayer meetings, through our prayer time. And uh, what we saw this morning is a direct result of people praying. And uh, you, you like what you experienced this morning. You come and pray. And God will keep meeting with you. I'm telling you, it'll make a difference. Wednesday night, our worship services and uh, classes and those things. Saturday, there will be a motorcycle ministry meeting. If you got any questions about that, see Brother Victor, Sister Whitney, Brother Carmen, uh, Sister Angel, one of those guys. Uh, men's conference is coming Saturday at the Lincoln the Church of God. If you'd like to go to this, get with me at the service. Several folks have already told me today that they want to go, and uh, we, wanna, we want anybody that wants to go to go. There is a $15 charge, but if you can't do that now or if you want to do that later, i got to write one check for all of us. So if you want to go and you want to get me, pay me back later or whatever you want to do, or if you can't pay me, I don't care. I don't want anybody that wants to go not to be able to go. If you'd like to go, the name of the, the conference is called Guarding the Gates. It's about rising up, being the men we need to be, protecting our homes, those things, and uh, we're just looking forward to a good time. That's a state, that's a state-sponsored conference. So if you'd like to go next Saturday, 9:30 in the morning, uh, get with me at the service. If you're not already got word to me or spoke to my wife, uh, and we'll take care of that. No kids' church next Sunday, as I shared with you this morning. Every fifth Sunday, we're gonna. Every time there's a fifth Sunday, we're gonna take uh, that fifth Sunday off for the kids' church to give them some time to rest and relax because the new format which we're doing it takes a lot out of our kids workers and we want them to be able to recoup and uh, do do the things and, and get refreshed for the lord peanut butter xl a lot of people have already signed up out there and uh praise god that this will be uh taken care of when the fast is over i'm just thanking god for that i done signed up for my four eggs i i love peanut butter eggs so if you're not signed up you'd like to have one that's going through the tent i think is what i said they'll, they'll get those orders out and when will you be bringing those the 13th. Going through the 10th, they're having the 13th. That's good. That's a good order right there now, I'm telling you. Car and bike show coming up at the end of May. They'll be able to tell you more about it, but we need to start getting sponsors uh, for this. If you know people that own businesses, run businesses, uh, maybe somebody wants to talk, uh, uh, do something in honor of somebody or in memory of someone, there's various ways you can do it. If you have any questions about that, see Brother Victor, Sister Whitney, they'll be able to give you more information. You ready? Well, that was weak. Are you ready? Listen, the scriptures declare that as you draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to you. Now, if you just lay back and wait on Him to come meet with you, it's not going to happen. Well, preacher, how do I draw nigh to Him? Through your worship, through your praise, through your adoration. Make it about Him and worship Him tonight. If you'll keep that focus, just like you had this morning, I'm telling you, what God did this morning will be blown away tonight. You say impossible. I'm telling you, it's possible. It's possible. The Bible said that Solomon prayed a prayer, and when he prayed a prayer, that the glory of God filled the house that no one could stand. We saw running and dancing and shouting and speaking in other tongues and all kind of great things that God did this morning. Done got one report. Uh, Eddie Mincy, we've been praying for him, and, and uh, she told me we prayed for him specifically this morning. She got a report out the church that he was laying in the hospital bed and give a thumbs up. This man was supposed to have been dead two days ago. God didn't turn around. I'm telling you, God's a good God. He hears the prayers. The Bible said that while we're, while we're praying, the answer is hold the way. Thank God that he's on the throne. And he's evident. God is watching. As I talked about this morning, I feel him. Up. Woo, glory. I'm, I might want to sing because I feel the preacher in the house tonight. Glory to God. I feel him. I'm telling you, I feel it. I thank God for what I... Glory to God. Let's, let's, pro, let's approach the throne of grace boldly tonight. Let's, let's come before his presence with singing, with rejoicing. I say clap your hands, all you people, and shout out to God with a voice of triumph. Amen. Know that, uh, listen, you might not feel victory. You might not think victory's there, but God has promised us victory. Just go ahead and rejoice because he's promised victory. Whether you feel it, whether you think it, it's, it's there. It's there for God to do in your life only what he But let's go to prayer first. Ask him to have his way. We got several needs and requests. We need to remember why she's pulling up. Let me tell you, Dusty Fowler, this is uh, Lisa Sparks' cousin, 31 years old. He's got bowel, intestine, and stomach cancer. And they're calling in hospice, 31 years of age. I know a God that can heal this. I know him, folks. Are you with me? I know him. I know what he's able to do. I know what he's able to turn around. God can heal Dusty tonight in the name of Jesus. Believe it. 
Frank Mosteller is dealing with cancer. Lori Ulmer, this is my, my cousin. She needs a deliverance. Margie Gables dealing with macular degeneration, but God can heal that. Fred Dellinger's in the hospital, been dealing with gallbladder issues. Diane Perkins, Kim's mom, needs a total recovery. Sister Melody was here, and I'm believing that we're going to be able to take her name off this list, that God done a total work in her. Amen? I want to pray that God continue to do a work in her. Suzette Grooms, pray for God to raise her up. Doctors are saying there's no possible cure for ALS. But what doctors can't do, God can do. Amen? We want to pray for Suzette, that God will do a miracle in her life. Continue to remember Wally Lucchese, who's on a ventilator. Pete Gilbert, want to continue to pray for him. Sister Elizabeth's grandfather, that God would just do a work. They called hospice in what, two months ago? A month ago, something like that? That thought, 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 thought he was dying. God just turned it around. God can do that. I'm telling you, God knows what he's doing. Want to continue to pray for Eddie, that God would touch him and minister to him. Continue to pray for Sister Janet. She says she's doing good. I like, I like to hear them kind of reports. But I know that there's a... I know that the enemy would just love to take this cancer and, and, and devour her, but I speak, I speak life in the name of Jesus, that God would just do a, a mighty work in her life. Pray, continue to pray for direction for the church and that God would just give us clarity. God would just continue to pour out his spirit upon all the, that desire him, that God would just have his way. And all these other needs that are on our list, several folks that we need to continue to pray for, God knows the need, God knows what's going on, and we're just going to believe together. Would you grab your neighbor's hand? Let's join together in agreement tonight. Over these deeds, there's power. In the Bible said, where two or three agree is touching any one thing, whatsoever they ask, it shall be done. I believe it can be done tonight. As a matter of fact, in faith, I speak it to be done tonight. Because we come together in agreement. The Bible declares that when we come together in one mind and one accord, great things can happen. As a matter of fact, God looked down upon the children of men when they come out of Noah's ark, and he told them to, told them to go and disperse, but they wanted to build a, build a tower in the Bible. And he said, look at how the people are one. Nothing shall be withheld from them. I'm telling you, they were in disobedience, and God said they could accomplish what they want. When you're in obedience to the will of God, what great things we can accomplish when you got God on your side and you're doing it under the will and the authority of God. Woo! Oh, Lord, I, I got about 15 avenues I could go down tonight, but I'm feeling something tonight, folks. Let's agree together. Father, we love you. You're a healer. You are a healer. There is testimony all across this congregation of healing, deliverance. God, where you made a way. And Father, we just bind together in the name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. The name that is above every cancer. The name that's above every sickness. The name that's above every disease. God, the name that's above every addiction. God, the name that's above every sin. The name, God, that's above every bondage. We speak and declare the name of Jesus. No other name like that name. And God, we just declare it right now. And Father, we just speak over every life, every heart, every body. In the name of Jesus, God, that your will be perfected. And God, that you be glorified. Touch every person that's here tonight, God, as we join hands all across this congregation. I pray, God, that the divine will of God be accomplished in every life, in every heart. And God, that you would help us to walk as you'd have us to walk and be what you'd have us to be. Father, I give you the glory. I give you the praise and the honor. As already has been said, I pray, God, that every word that's spoken, Every song that's sung, God, that it bring you glory tonight. God, that you be lifted up on high. For if you be lifted up, God, you'll draw all men unto you. And God, I pray that you draw folks to you tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I just pray tonight that you don't take your foot off the gas pedal. God, I pray that you take us to the point that you want to take us to. God, that we surrender to you and begin to walk in you and just delight in your presence. God, that we begin to praise you and magnify you and worship you. And God, I would just say right now, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place tonight. Holy Ghost, show the evidence of your presence in a mighty way. And God, allow us to rejoice in your presence in the fullness of who you are. Hey, I pray in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Spirit, come. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence, for it is evident, God. I can see it on every face. I can see it in their eye, God. There is a hunger. There is a desire, God, for more of you. Lord, I thank you for this morning. But God, we came back tonight for a refilling and infilling. God, an overflowing power, God, that only you can give. And I just pray, God, that your will be done. You're a good God. You're a good God, and I praise you tonight. I give you the glory and the honor. And God, we just want to give you praise. In Jesus' name. Come on, folks. Put your hands together. Would you worship the Lord? He's a good God. Come on, worship. Lord, we worship. 
If you come at this time, I want to serve you the opportunity to give. I just want to let you know that uh, probably, probably the next few days, I'm going to start pushing a mission project that God has just laid on my heart. If you'll look out on the welcome desk out there, I know that we've not taken on any mission project as far as an all-year type thing. But there's a, some flyers and some different things that are going on out there. It'll say YWA, which is Youth World Evangelism. Um, I can't remember what they, but anyway, it's, 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 it's a project that's going on in Africa. They got what they call a fire line, where it kind of goes through the middle of Africa. The northern part of Africa is predominantly Muslim, and the, uh, and the southern part of Africa is, is, is mostly Christian. And what's happening is there, that firewall that's in the middle, the Muslims are coming down into the Christian part of the nations. These are Muslim converts, people that are converted from Muslim back to Christianity. And they're going down there and they're threatening, they're bribing, they're doing all kinds of things and converting Christians back to Muslim through their needs and through these things. But what, what the church is wanting to do is begin to build some ministry centers on that firewall. So that as the Muslims try to cross, they have to cross these ministry centers where there will be people that begin to do things evangelistically, training, things of that nature. It's a big, big undertaking. This is what, I'm, this is what we're going to do. I'm looking, I'm looking for 50 people. It's just going to be a one-time shot. But we're looking for 50 people. And anywhere from a dollar denomination to a $50 denomination range i have some envelopes and you can take one of those envelopes and as as soon as you can it ain't it, it, we've got till the summer sometime in june to do this but you pray and ask god what he'd have you to do take one of those envelopes when i get them out there whatever denomination it is and just put that amount of money in there if you got a 20 a, a, one with a 20 on it put 20 dollars in it if you got one with 50 put 50 dollars on it I can tell you the $40 was already taken and the $50 was already taken. So those, those are taken. 
If, you, if, you, if you'd like to help somewhere in that range, just get one that's close to it, the $49 or $48, whatever. But if we can do that, we'll raise $1,275 to go to this project. Just with 50 people participating, anywhere from a dollar to 50. And so these are, this is just a great mission project, great opportunity to, to, to make a difference where we can go into a predominantly Muslim community and set up Christian ministry centers that will make a difference, and we as a church can be a part of that. You be much in prayer about that, and I'll get those envelopes out there as quickly as I can so that we can get that started. Again, we've got the next three, four months to get this raised, but this is a goal that I've set in my own heart, my own prayer time as to what God would have us to do, and uh, we, can, we can make a difference. Every, every little bit counts, and uh, we, we want to see what God has for us. So be thinking about that. God's blessed us. Uh, we've been able to pay off one bill. We've got one other bill halfway paid off, and we're going to try to get the other half paid off in the next month. And uh, catching up on some things that we were behind on, God, God's been good. First of the year is always strong for us, and so I just want to encourage you to continue doing what God has asked of you to do because there is no greater blessing than, than obeying Him, and by obeying Him, the blessings will begin to flow. And let God do that in your life. So please... Uh, just continue doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. I just want to take this moment just to say thank you. Uh, it, it, this this first part of the year has not been as stressful as some other parts of the year as far as the finances of the church. I thank God for that. That's because you you stepped up to the plate and obeyed the Lord and done the things that you needed to do, and I appreciate it. And uh, I, I know, let me just say this. Uh, where's Daniel? I saw Daniel. Oh, there's Daniel. Da Daniel. Daniel was at a store one day or something. He was at the ATM machine getting cash, and he was... He was just going on and on and on about how, you know, I, I don't carry checks and I don't carry a lot of cash. And, I, you know, I like to pay my offer. And I said, well, Dan, you can go to our website and pay, pay your, uh, your tithe anytime you, want, anytime you want to. For those of you that don't know that, you can go to our website. And there's a donate button on there. Just donate, market tithes, and, 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 and send it. You can set it up through your PayPal account. You can set it up with your, 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 your debit card or whatever. And you can do it that way. And, and, and it's easy, it's simple, and you don't have to worry about forgetting just a couple of weeks there's going to also we'll have the opportunity we'll be able to swap your debit card here at the church where you can be able to pay your tithes and some people say well man i, I don't know why you're doing that it, it's going to make a difference simply because that's the trend everything's going i mean you know people are using debit cards and, and for those of you that want to write a check or put cash in there well we appreciate that but for those of you that don't necessarily carry your checkbook or don't and you get in the church say oh man I, you know we're going to give you opportunity to be able to do that so uh, those are some things that we're looking at doing so opportunities that we have. So you can either do it at the website, check, cash, or uh, uh, and like I said, in a few weeks we'll have it where you can swipe it and uh, do it that way. So th thank God for technology. It just makes it simpler for some folks, and I just thank God for that. So I, I, I don't want you to come here and the enemy beat you up because, you you, you know, you forgot. We, we're going we're gonna to make a, make a way for you one way or another. Amen? Amen. Because like I said, the blessing's in your pocket. <laughs> you got to release the blessing that God can release the blessing. Amen. But when you, Whatever you release to him, the Bible tells us that he'll, he'll give back to you greater than what you gave to him. He's a, he's a good God. Amen. He's a good God. So let's pray of our offering tonight. Just believe and trust it for the will of the Lord to be done. Father, we love you. We thank you. I thank you for the faithfulness of the folks that are here. You've been so good to this ministry, Lord. There's times, God, that I feel like as a, as a whole, we've not done what we could do. But God, even in that, you still were good to us. God, we, we, we've, we've talked about doing things for the orphans. We've talked about doing things for the widows. We've talked about doing things for Israel. We've talked about doing things missionally. And God, I just pray that we become a people, a body, that becomes sufficient to the point that we can do the things that we're talking about doing. Because God, it's those things that you bless. But Lord, we cannot find our sufficiency in ourselves. Our sufficiency has to be in you. And God, I believe that when we do what you've told us to do, sufficiency will come. <laughs> and God, I just pray that that's where we find it, and that's where we long to have it. And I pray, God, that you pour out your blessings. For each and every gift that's been given this morning or today, God, I pray that you open that door of blessing and that you begin to pour it out on folks, God. As I declared over them this morning, God, for jobs and money and finances and provision, God, you talk more about money than you did a lot of other issues within the scripture because God it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a catch in a lot of people and there's a lot of people that have took scriptures that you declared unto us and they've twisted them for their own benefit 
God, that's not at all what I'm trying to accomplish. I just want to see kingdom work done. I want to see lives changed and souls won and people to experience what we got to experience this morning, to experience that God in the fullness of who you are. Father, we surrender it to you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We magnify you today. You deserve all the glory. We magnify you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Give us unto the Lord tonight. God bless you. working God there's no one else like him I want us to agree together on something I keep forgetting to tell you this and I shouldn't but I want us to bind together and agree and then I'm going to ask y'all to sing this again okay but tomorrow at 10 o'clock there's a man coming here to meet with me that read our article that was put in the Charlotte Observer last Sunday this man's a church of God man for the last 28 years, he's worked and run a company that does restorations of old mill roofs. I'm sorry I've been holding out on you, but I had a few things on my mind. I don't know exactly how that conversation is going to go, but I know that God has a plan. This man just called me out of the blue and said, Pastor, I read the article, and I'd like to come meet with you. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you something. I've been preparing for rain. I, I've already met with a guy about the parking lot, and he threw a number at me that made me want to sit down. All right? Because, you know, I, I, but I believe God's up to something. And I don't know what this man's going to do the morning. I don't know what he's going to say, but he... He and I had a great conversation. He kept calling me friend. I hope that's a good thing. 
He said, look, look, friend, I, I, I want to come look at your building. I, I, I was excited about what God's doing, what, what I read. He said, I, I've been in the church of God, and he said, I, you know, he, he told me a story. But I want us to agree together that if it's the will of the Lord and that God's going to work through this way, because I'm going to tell you something, I don't want anything that's not the will of God. Are you with me? I, w- I want the will of the Lord. Paul asked God three times to remove a thorn from him. And God said, no, I'm going to leave it there. You know what? If God wants this roof to stay leaky to keep us humble, I'll keep this leaky roof to stay humble. But if God wants to touch the heart of this man, he come in and say, look, we're going to take care of this for you. I'll take that too. Because there's a lot more things I want to focus on rather than a leaky roof. Are you with me? So do you believe that God is great? He can do miracles so great. I'm going to ask you to do it one more time. Would you join up with your neighbor? If you would stand, if you're already seated, would you would stand? If you, if you believe that God is great, that God does miracles so great, I want you to join up, and I want us to get points of agreement, and I want us to agree that God touched this man's heart, and that whatever the will of the Lord is for this roof, well, we get big agreement parties now, but they all join up. Amen. Start talking about the roof and save money. Everybody like, come here, give me a high five. <laughs> but the Lord just touched my heart over there and told me that I need to share this with you. That we need to come together. We need to agree that whatever the will of the Lord is, I, I'm not going to pray selfish. I just want the will of the Lord. But if this is God working and this is God saying, you know, I got you, son. I, I got this church. I got this ministry. And you're getting it in the right direction. And I'm going to take care of you. If that's what God's doing here, then I want us to agree that the will of the Lord be perfected. More than anything, okay? Would you agree with me, Father? In the name of Jesus. God, I do not believe it was by chance that this man called. I do not believe it's by chance that we're going to meet tomorrow. I do not believe it's by chance, God, that you're working these things out. But, Lord, I'm praying for your will to be perfected. You're a great God. This man, I I want to come meet you. And, God, you know what you're up to. Father, there, there are some great things that I've heard over the last two weeks of what's going on and what you're doing and the provision that you're giving. Father, I'm asking you, please, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let your will be done. Let your glory be revealed. And God, that if you'll touch the heart of this man, if, Lord, I know, God, that you'll pour a blessing on him like he's never seen before. I know that, God. Not because of who I am or because of who this church is, but because this is your ministry. And Father, we come together in a point of agreement under, I'm obeying you, God. You just touched my heart and told me to come out and really challenge You do miracles so great. Lord, I don't know what this meeting's going to hold tomorrow. I don't know what people are going to do and I don't know what people are going to say, but that's all right. But God, I believe there's something good to come out of this tomorrow. And I pray, God, that your will be done, that you be perfected, and that your, your will be perfected in our lives. God, if this is to stay with us and this is to keep us humble, then God, let it stay with us, keep us humble. Because God, more than anything, I don't want this to become some flashy show. I don't want this to become some flash in the pan moment. But God, I believe that your hand is on this ministry. That your divine will is going to be perfected. And all the honor. And all the praise. And we give it to you in the precious holy name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, amen. Come on, worship the Lord. You're great. There's no one like you. Now, would you really just go ahead and worship Him? Come on, let's just go ahead and worship Him. He's a great God. He's a great God.
Come on, give him glory. Give him glory. He's good. <laughs> There's no one like him. God is so good. Let, let me just say on the lines of the article, I appreciate Brother Bill Ward and his efforts to make that happen. And, and uh, I thank God for uh, just the love he has for this ministry and for us and the comments that have been made and all the things. Would you let Brother Bill know how much we appreciate him doing that for us? Just obeying the Lord. He said something about he 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 uh he he didn't worry about no softball meeting after service this morning, but uh if you do if you do want to play softball or like to play softball and it's co-ed, and uh, for those for those of you that might be uh, not understanding that means boys or girls can play. Uh, if you're 15 years old or up and uh, see Brother Bill after the service, where, where would you like to meet him, brother? Just somewhere in the vicinity where you're at, be fine. Back in the corner, okay? He's gonna take you to the corner. All right. We'll find out how committed you are. So uh, if, that, if that's something you're interested in doing, like to do, I, I've had several people say to me before about wanting to play softball and these kind of things. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know how much effort or time I could put toward it, but uh, if that's something that you'd like to do, he'll meet with you in the back corner as soon as service is over. So uh, we're looking for what God has to do. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. If you would stand for the reading of God's Word, if you're not already doing so, please. Please honor God's word tonight. Luke chapter 4, we're going to look at verses 14 through 21. Luke chapter 4, beginning with verse 14. The Bible said, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. You know, you read that portion of scripture and a lot of attention is placed on verses 18 and 19, the, the, the prophecy, the prophetic words of Isaiah that Jesus began to declare them. But several years ago, I was reading through this scripture, and verse 20 gripped my heart. The Bible said he closed the book, gave it again to the minister, and sat down. This part here got me. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. I want to minister tonight, eyes on the master. Eyes on the master, avoiding spiritual blindness. Eyes on him, avoiding spiritual blindness. Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity that we've been given to come into your house, to be ministered to by your spirit, to hear your word and to grow. I just pray, God, for whatever time we have left tonight, God, that your will be performed. God, as we talked about this morning, God, that you would hasten your word to perform it. God, that you will begin to do in us what only you can do. And God, I just pray that we don't lose focus. It's easy to get lost in hype. It's easy to get lost in emotion. It's easy to get lost in flesh. God, if we can just keep our eyes on you, Lord, we can see some great things. And Father, we just surrender what you're doing in us. We just surrender to you. God, that your glory be revealed in us. God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory and the honor. And we ask all we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. As you're being seated, would you hug your neighbor and tell them, keep your eyes open.
prior to this scripture, the reading of the text that I gave you prior to what's going on there is Jesus has been driven by the Spirit of God into the wilderness. Forty days, forty nights, he'd been fasting and praying and seeking the face of God and was tempted of the devil while I was there. It's a very weak moments that we see Jesus. The Bible said that he hungered. And the, and the enemy came to him and said, Command this stone that it be made bread. And the Bible said that Jesus rebuked him and said to him, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The Bible tells that he took him to another place, a high pinnacle. And at one moment showed him all the regions of the world and said it to him, You know, if you'll bow down and worship me, then I will, I will uh, give you all that you have. And he said, Lord, he, he rebuked him again. He said, Listen, I, 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 there's absolutely no way that I would do that. Because only God will I worship, God the Father. Another moment he told him, he said, cast yourself down. Because the scripture says that any time that you fall, that he'll bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. See, the, the enemy knows how to use scripture to get what he's trying to get out of you. Because he's going to try to use what you might think you know to use it against you so that you'll fall into the temptation. But Jesus was far more wise than this. And he didn't allow this to happen. You see, there, there are a lot of folks that out there that claim to be Christian and, and, and like to be identified as Christian. But really, they're full of the devil. And they're using the scripture for their benefit. And, 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 and therefore, we have to be uh, wise as serpents and harmless as the scripture says and, and yet do what the will of God is and balance the scriptures out and that's exactly what Jesus is saying and the Bible said that Jesus rebuked him again and said I, I'm not going to tempt God uh, I, and it's not something that I should be doing and so therefore he, he, he come through this and he came through this victorious and the Bible said that as he, as he, as he came out of the wilderness in the fullness of the power of the spirit that, that as he came out he, he, his custom was to go to the synagogue it's amazing to me that when folks get in a battle with the enemy, that the first thing they don't want to do is go to the house of the Lord. He didn't break his custom. He knew where he needed to be. He knew what he needed to be doing. He did not lose focus simply because he just went through a trial or a tribulation or just because he went through a, a time of testing. He did not lose focus on what he was meant to do. And I've come to declare tonight that we as people of God need to understand that there are going to be testings. There are going to be trials. There are going to be tribulations. But don't lose your focus. Don't allow the enemy to divert your attention away from the things of God. When you know you need to be in the house of God, be in the house of God. When you know you need to pray, pray. When you know you need to read, read and dig in the Word of God and find what God is saying. Don't get distracted from the elements around, that are surrounding you, but rather stand strong in the power of the Lord and the power of His might and allow God to do in your life what only He can do. The Bible said that the disciples went to Jesus and asked Him and said, Lord, what shall be the sign of your coming? And He said, Take heed that no man deceive you. I like to replace deceive and I like to put in distract because deception comes very easily through distraction. Are you with me? You see, the enemy would like to get your attention on things that they don't need to be on. The enemy would like to get you to a place where you're looking at things that are going to be of no benefit to you. The enemy would like to attach you with people and attach you with things that are going to drag you down and suck the very life out of you. But what you need to do is maintain that kind of focus that says, you know what, God, I'm pressing my way through. I'm not laying here and dying. You've not called me to back up, but you've called me to march forward. And God, that's what I'm willing to do. And that's what I'm aiming to do. I'm going to press to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God which is in Christ Jesus Jesus goes in he walks into that synagogue and as a rabbi or a teacher their acknowledgement of him was they gave him the book and he opened to Isaiah 61 verse 1 and he began to read the spirit of the Lord is upon me as he's repeating it in Luke 4 18 and 19 he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And notice he closes the book and gives it to the man of God. And he goes and he sits down. And the Bible said that when he sat down, everybody was looking at him. And all he could say was, today, the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. You see, the focus in that synagogue, in that meeting, was not on the minister. 
but rather on Jesus. The focus was not on what other people were doing or ups and downs and got to go to the bathroom and worried about what I'm going to eat for supper or what time is he going to let me out. They had a main focus, an intentional focus on Jesus Christ in that place. And God declared to him through his son, today scripture is being fulfilled in your ear. I would to God that he'd begin to fulfill the word of God in us again. I would to God that some things that he has declared over us would begin to come to pass. I would to God that things and promises that he has rendered unto us would begin to happen and begin to transpire. I would to God that we begin to see the mighty hand of God and the word of God come alive in our services in this last day. Take heed that no man deceive you or distract you keep your focus today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears I want to show you the danger of allowing certain things to come in your life that will cause you to become spiritually blind in the book of numbers there's a story about a prophet by the name of Balaam Balaam had went to God, and God began to speak to him about the men that were with him. And as he began to declare and talk to God about these things, and God began to speak to him about his visit that he had planned and had scheduled to go and see Balak. God told him, don't go. It's not what you're to do. But out of sheer disobedience, Balaam decided, I'm going anyway. And as he's on this journey, see, he was about to yoke himself with somebody. He was about to connect himself with somebody that God was not pleased with. Don't go with them. You shall not curse the people for they're blessed. God is saying, don't yoke yourself up with them. I'm telling you, stay away. Don't do it. And Balaam, out of sheer hard-headedness, disobedience, rebellion, whatever you want to call it, hopped on his donkey and began to ride toward Balak's house. And as they're on the way, the Bible said they got into this tight place. How many times you know you know you've been disobeying God and you find yourself in a tight place? Oh, y'all don't want me to preach tonight. Y'all want something pretty. I, listen, there have been times that I've been directly disobedient to God, and God put me in the squeeze to get my attention. But that did not deter Balaam because Balaam had determined, I'm going to Balak's house. The donkey got into that tight place, and he began to fidget. He began to fight. He began to resist. And Balaam pulled out his whip. And began to hit on that donkey to try to make him move forward. The more Balaam began to hit him, the more he began to resist. You see, I'm trying to be nice here because I can get myself in a lot of trouble right here. You see, the donkey was a lot smarter than the donkey that was riding him. Are you with me? So I'm being nice right now. But he beat him to the point that the donkey said, I'm not going any further. I find myself up against something I don't want to be up against. I find To, 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 you know, to, to not go forward as Balaam was trying to make him go forward. As a matter of fact, Balaam got mad at him one time because the donkey turned so hard to one direction that it rammed Balaam's leg up against the wall. And, and, and he didn't like that, and he just jumped off and started beating him until finally the donkey had enough. You ever had enough? Let me tell you something. When a donkey starts talking to you, the donkey's had enough. The donkey looked at him and said, why are you beating on me? That would have had my attention. But let me tell you something. Balaam talked. Some would have had my mind. I wouldn't have had to sit there and think twice. If a donkey starts talking to me, 
I want to hear what he's got to say. Amen. Why are you beating on me? Balaam said, you're not doing what I want you to do. The donkey said, I'm not going a step further. Because there's before us the angel of the Lord. And I'm not going anywhere. He's got a flaming sword. And I'm not going any further. Creation has a way of falling in obedience to God. But even when Balaam didn't understand what was going on, all of a sudden God opened his eyes. And even in his disobedience, he began to see what's before him. And he repented of the fact that he was disobeying God. Can I tell you tonight that if you're in disobedience, it will cause you to have spiritual blindness that you will not be able to see things of God and what I say to you tonight is you need to divert your attention and get back in line with the word of almighty God and get back to obeying him so that you can see again I want to see again I want to have clear vision I don't want any disobedience in my life that I miss the will and the plan and the purpose and the provision of God I want God to do in my life only what he can do into your life not only disobedience, but fear will cause you to become spiritually. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. But I want us to see an instance where Elisha is having to deal with a situation. And the Bible said in 2 Kings chapter 6, beginning with verse 13, That the man of God speaks and says, go and spy, or rather the people speak, they're trying to find Elisha, and they said, go and spy and where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he's in Dothan. So the king sent horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, he said unto him, alas, my master, what are we going to do? We're in trouble. Fear gripped him. Because all he could see was the enemy encamped around about him. All he could see is that he was encompassed by the power of the enemy. All he could see was the chariots and the swords and the bows and arrows and all the stuff that they might have brought to capture one man. I'm going to tell you something. The devil's scared of you when he sends out a whole troop after you. Can I? Whew, See, we look around and we see an enemy. I look around and I see victory because it's an opportunity for God to show up and say to us, I'm going to get you through this. Woo. David said, God, the enemy is compassed all around me, but God, you can cause 10,000 to fall at my right side. God, you can do it, and I'm telling you what he did for them. He can still do for us. Don't you fear, and don't you be afraid. God will see you through. Over 365 times in the scripture it says, don't be afraid. I think God's serious about it, folks. But this, uh, this, this, this servant, master, what are we going to do? And Elisha spoke to him, and he said, fear not, for they that be with us, with them. And I tell you, the devil might have took so many angels when he fell from heaven, but they that be with us are more than they that are against us. Can I tell you, these strong men standing on your side, on your left, on your right, to keep you in the midst of a battle, if you're standing right by yourself, if God be for you, who can be against you? Can I tell you tonight that there's absolutely no weapon that the enemy can form against you that will prosper as you heard this morning when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of God will raise up that standard against him you don't have to fear of whom shall I fear and of whom shall I be afraid I will not back down because I know that the Lord is on my side fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them and Elisha prayed the Bible said when he prayed, he said, Lord, open the eyes of this young man. And when he opened his eyes, 
because he was blinded by fear. But when he opened his eyes, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. He's still a God of fire. All around Elisha. Let me tell you something. When you think you're standing alone, but you're standing for God, you're never standing alone. God will stand there with you. And can I tell you? David said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, Goliath tried to kill him, but he couldn't kill him. A lion tried to kill him, but he couldn't. Him. Saul tried to kill him, but he couldn't kill him. Absalom tried to kill him, but he couldn't kill him. Why? Because the Lord, the Lord was on his side. The Lord was on his side. I said the Lord was on his side, and God saw him through. Fear not, for they that be for us are more than they that are against us. Don't you fear? He saw the mountain full. Of horses. Disobedience will cause you to be blind. Fear will cause you to be blind. Will cause you to be blind. Matthew chapter 14. Jesus has told the disciples, go to the other side. I'm going up here to pray. But you guys go to the other side. He wants you to go somewhere. He's going to get you there. Are you with me? If he tells you to go somewhere, he's going to get you there. It doesn't matter what storm comes. It doesn't matter what trial comes. It doesn't matter what tribulation comes. If Jesus has told you to get there, he's going to get you there. But the Bible said the ship was in the middle of the sea. Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. I just want to say that's just like the devil. You're in the middle of your opportunity. You're feeling good. You're going along, and man, I've got a word from the Lord, and I'm walking into my place. I'm telling you, this little stage can't contain me tonight. I'm telling you right now. Oh, I'm trying to get there, and I'm trying to get to my place, and boy, I feel the presence of. I'm praying my prayer. I'm confessing my word. I've got a promise from God. I'm going to get there. And then all of a sudden, wham, the devil hits you. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, the enemy just. Uh, see, this sea was actually down in the valley. And what would happen was, is he said the wind was contrary. What was happening was, was the wind was coming off one mountain. The other mountain, and when they met in the middle, it caused this turbulence to take place and everything to begin to shake and rock. Oh, I'm going to get ahead of myself. And these boys are experienced fishermen. These boys know what it is to be out on that sea. I'm sure this wasn't the first time they've been in a boat out in the sea. I'm sure this wasn't the first time they've been in a boat out in the sea in the middle of a storm. I'm sure there's been times that they've got pelted by rain, blown around by wind. I'm sure this wasn't the first time. But the Bible says, let's go to verse 25. The Bible says that in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came unto them walking on the sea. On Sunday morning, there's a, there's a, there's a plaque on there. That says, presented by Sister Ella Taylor. Sister Ella Taylor went on to be with the Lord not too long ago, and she she uh, she she was in her 90s. But I remember Sister, she had one of them snow white hairdos and that power tower hairdo. You know what I'm talking about? But boy, I remember when she get up to sing, she had one of them deep alto voices, and she began to sing, "Walking the sea, He walks the sea." Jesus, he came to them that night, walking the sea. And boy, she'd walk while she was singing it. And I got to thinking about that song, got to thinking about Sister Taylor as I was thinking about this message. And I thought to myself, you know what? I imagine she could see it as the Lord come into her life and as the Lord began to do some things in her. But as these disciples were struck with fear in the midst of their journey that the Lord told them to go. Let me, let me just back up for just a moment. Actually, let me jump forward just a moment. You see, the enemy did not want them to get to the other side. Why? 
Because as soon as they got on the other side, when their foot hit the sand of the shore, of the shore and Jesus stepped out of the boat on the shore, there come a demoniac out of the out of the caves, out of the tombs, who had been shackled and fettered. And I mean, the, the city tried to do everything. Else, and the devil said, I got that one. I'm not letting him go. So I got to do something to stop this progress. Can I tell you, when God gives you a mission, the devil don't want you going on that mission because he's afraid of you. But what I'm telling you tonight is that it doesn't matter what he throws at you, God's going to see you through. And you're gonna make it in it. I'm telling you, you're gonna make it. God is gonna see you through. And if God's gonna come walking on water to get to where you at, gotta get to where you at because He's an ever present help in a time of trouble. Walking on the sea. It's a spirit, it's a ghost. Peter said, Wait a minute, that guy looks familiar. Lord. Is that you, Peter? Lord, if that's you, call me to walk on the water. Come. No argument, no debate. He said, boy, if you're that bold, come. Now, I know that I'm looking at a bunch of people tonight that like to walk on water, but I'm probably looking at a bunch of people that never have walked on water. Wave at me if you ever walked on water. We're going to trade places. Doris, you walked on water? All right. Praise God. I, pray, I bet you feel like it sometimes. And we beat Peter up a lot of times because he's zealous. He's anxious. He jumps out there sometimes, cutting people's ears off, making proclamations, saying things like you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and then the next minute trying to rebuke Jesus, and Jesus had to rebuke him. Peter was a zealous fellow, and we beat up on him all the time about some of his shortfalls and shortcomings. But I want you to know this next part. Peter was coming out of the ship, and he walked on the water. Man, there's so many ways we could take this tonight. But what I'm telling you what happened was is that when Jesus said, come, what that was supposed to be sinkable all of a sudden became solidified. And Peter, when he stepped out in faith on the command and the word of God, the Bible said that he began to was he going? He was going to Jesus. I got to get to where he's at. I don't know about you, but I've been tossing this boat long enough. I'm going to where the Lord is. I don't want to be in here with you scallywags anymore. You've been down. You've been fearing. But I heard the voice of God, and I'm going to go where the Lord is. And if that means i got to walk on water to get to where God is, then I'm going to step out and begin to walk on water to get where the Lord is. I'm telling you, the Bible said that Peter walked on the water. Go to the next verse. But. Don't you hate it in those buts in your life? I know that might go, not go over too well with some of y'all, but I've, I've had some butts in my life. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. He was going to Jesus, folks. The Lord had told him to come. The Lord had already told him to go to the other side, and the wind came, and it scared him. Now Jesus said, come to me, and the wind comes, and it scared him. Why in the world are we so afraid of something that we're looking at the one that has authority over the very thing that we're afraid of? What manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? But the Bible said that as he was walking on the water, he got the look. Listen, I'd have been shouting the fact that I was walking on water. going to do to me. He's the one who says, step on the water. I'm walking on the water. Why in the world am I going to be afraid of wind when I got something right here that could kill me like that? But the wind was boisterous. He was afraid. And beginning to, say, beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. I love this next part of the verse. Let's go to this next part of the verse, please. Immediately. How many times you ever had to call on the name of the Lord? And immediately, he didn't wait around, he didn't delay, but immediately, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. 
The devil thought he had me. But Jesus came and grabbed me. Woo! Glory to God. He called him and said, you little faith, why did you doubt? You're walking on water. The boat ain't been capsized. I'm walking on the water with you. I got you. Now, I want to go. If I can play it just a little bit here, if you'll give me some liberty, I want to play just a little bit. Because there's absolutely nothing in the Scripture. Because when you, let's go to the next verse. Go to 32. And when they were coming to the ship, it doesn't say how they got back there. They were in, at least within a shouting distance of one another. I mean, he was at least in a, a distance that he cried out, Lord, save me, and immediately Jesus was there. He was that close. He was that close to Jesus. Folks, I'm telling you this. If I've ever believed that we're living in the last days, I believe we're living in the last days right now. And I can hear Jesus saying, come. Come unto me. Come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come. Come, drink of the word of life freely. Whosoever will, let them come. I can hear. And there's some folks that are just this close. And all of a sudden, the enemy strikes fear in the heart, puts doubt in the heart, puts disobedience in the heart, and they begin to sink. But how many of you know you can still call out to the Lord? You can have water up around your knees, around your waist. You call out, Lord, save me. And I believe with all my heart that the Lord will stretch forth that hand and catch you up. That Lord, oh, the Lord will take you and protect you and guard you. And so let me play just a little bit. He's done rebuked him. He told him he had a little faith. He's asking him why did he doubt. But I don't believe that the Lord took it any further. Because he had to look at Peter and say, well, you gave it a try, son. You did better than the rest of them did. The rest of them still in the boat shaking, wondering what in the world's going to happen to you. But at least you were willing to get out of the water and walk with me. I believe one of two things happened. Jesus got him by the hand, and he's caught up, and he's got him, by, he got him up safely. And I believe one of two things happened. Either, number one, Jesus had a conversation with him, and they walked back to the boat. They had to get their Jesus caught him up. He swooped him up in his arms, and he said, come on, son, I'll get you back to safety. I'll get you out of this. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll feel no evil, for you're with me. Can I tell you, it's like the old footprints. Lord, I saw two sets of footprints, but then I looked back and I only saw one. Why, Lord, did you leave me? Son, I didn't leave you. That was the time I can I tell you the Lord will carry you through your storm the Lord will carry you through your trial the Lord will carry you through your tribulation don't you doubt, don't you fear don't you fret, the Lord will see you through they got them back to the ship and look what happened and when they were in the ship the wind ceased that which the enemy tried to divert the attention of the mandate that was on them to go, the wind See, can I tell you what happened this morning? The Lord stepped in the boat. Are you with me? The Lord stepped in the boat. My wife told me on the way home, she said, you know one good thing about that service, that when you get into services like that, you just want to love on everybody before they leave. You know what the enemy would have rather seen? Us bickering and fighting and getting mad at one another and coming against one another. The enemy would have loved to see that. But when the Lord stepped in the boat, the wind ceased. All the hot air ceased. All the things about one another ceased. And we began to love on one another and cry with one another, lay hands on one another, pray for one another, encourage one another. And when the Lord stepped in, when the Lord steps in, the winds of controversy cease. Don't disobey. Don't fear. Don't doubt. And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they were in the ship, came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. Revelation. Revelation wiped the way doubt. Revelation wiped away fear. Revelation wiped away disobedience. Revelation wiped away lack of faith. There was something powerful 
about what transpired. So I want to conclude this way. I want to see him. Brother Major, you sing that song, oh, I want to see him. Look upon, I want to see him. But John tells us in his word that something has to transpire for us to see. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There is a distinct difference in being born again and having a confession of faith. Are you with me? I mean, you can come down and make a confession of faith all day long, but if you go right back out in the same hell and live like you always live, you ain't been born again. Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What has to transpire? There has to be a total transformation in your life of repentance and betrayal of the old life and flesh, and through the Spirit allow God to do in your life and to take you to places you never thought possible, which, which requires full surrender. To say to God, God, I am yours. I listened as I was praying for Brother Chad this morning, and this is what he kept saying, God, forgive me, but Lord, do with me what you want to do. I'm going to tell you something. Pastor Roger hit it on the head when he was praying earlier. It was broken and it was contrite spirit in this place this morning. Oh, we shouted. We were happy. We were excited. We were doing something. But I'm telling you, when you got broken and you got contrite and you finally said, you know, enough is enough, God said, I'll be near you. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, you know the rest of the conversation Jesus said. Well, Nicodemus said, Lord, how can a man be born the second time? Since he's been born the first time, how, how, how in the world can this happen? He said, first a man's born of water, but then he's born of the blood. You can't take blood out of the equation, folks. If you go on down in John 3, you'll see where Jesus said, John, Nicodemus, listen, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Wow. What some powerful scripture. Oh, I want to see him. Oh, I want to look upon his face. And I know that song sings a lot about heaven. That song's talking a lot about heaven, talking about, you know, that we're going to get to see him one day and we're going to behold him as Lord. But you know what? We can see him now. We can see him move with his spirit. We can see him move with his presence. We can experience him in his greatness. And can I tell you, when you see him, you'll never be the same. Three examples real quick, and I'm closing. Moses. Moses went up on Mount Sinai, and he went up before him, and he began to speak to God, and God began to speak face to face with him. He was having an interaction with God, fasting and praying and getting the commands from God. Moses made a request of God, God. Can I just see you? Lord, please, let me just see you. And the Bible said that God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, no man's ever looked upon my face and lived. Now, he was talking about physically there. But you know, I'd like to see his face and just die to myself that I might live unto him. I, I, I know what God was saying unto Moses, but if I, if I can just play with it a little bit. And the Bible said that Moses asked him, God, please, let me just let me see you. And the Lord said, you can't look upon my face. But I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. And I'm going to put my hand upon your face. And as I pass by, I'm going to release my hand. And you'll see my hind parts. And God did that. And the Bible said when Moses went before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off and until he came out. But when he came out and he spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded, the Bible says, and the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Let me tell you something, folks. When you've been with Jesus and you've spent time with God, carnal folks won't want to look on you. Carnality won't be able to speak and stand in your presence. When, you, when you've met with him and you've spent time with him, it'll change your whole outlook. There is something supernatural about spending time with God 
that God will do in your life. What only he can do, and I'm telling you, you'll walk in this community and people will look and say, wait a minute, you've been with him. You've been with him. Please, cover that up. Cover that up. Don't, don't let me look on that. But there will be those that will say, Lord, whatever he's got, that's what I want. It will make a difference. When you've been with God, when you spend time with him, I'm telling you, it will not only revolutionize you, but it will make you realize those that are around you and who they really are. In the Bible, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. I don't have all of them up there, but if you go on through this chapter, you'll see where Isaiah falls on his face before God, and he begins to proclaim before God, Woe is me, I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. But he went further, and he said, Lord, I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. God, knew, not only do I see my shortcoming, not only do I realize how bad I really am, but God, these people around me, they're dirty, they're filthy. Can I tell you, when you spent time with God, you won't find pleasure in the carnality of this world. Are you with me? When you've spent time with God, you will not find pleasure in the carnality of this world. In the book of Galatians, it gives us a list of, of works of the flesh. And I believe it's in Galatians, but when it gets to the end of that list, it, it, Paul talks about it a couple of different places, but when it gets to the end of the list, he said, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, and even those that take pleasure in them that do them. Folks, you don't have to commit to act. You can just applaud the ones that are doing it. And God said you're just as guilty. But when you've spent time with God, you'll find no pleasure in sin. Even though the Scripture said there is pleasure, but it's only for a season. And you'll realize real fast how short-lived sin and carnality and fleshly things will be against you. Moses spent time with God. Isaiah spent time with God. In Acts chapter 9, we find a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus. On his way to Damascus, and the Bible said as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Let me tell you what Jesus is literally saying to him. In the, in, the, in the New Testament days, they, when they plowed the field, they used oxen. And they had a stick with a kind of like a ball on the end of it that had pricks on it. And they called it an ox goad. And when that, when that ox would get out of line, they would take that ox goad and whack on that ox to get him back straight, get him back in line. And Jesus literally saying, Saul, I've been trying to get you in line and you keep kicking against me. You see that, that farmer or that person out tilling that ground, he'd hit that ox. That ox didn't like that. And he let him know real quick he didn't like that, but he'd get in line. Jesus said to Paul or Saul, quit kicking against the pricks. It's hard for you to do this. Quit fighting against me. Quit resisting me. Get your eyes on me. Don't get your eyes on stuff. Get your eyes on me. And on that road to Damascus, when he was struck down, scales came across Saul's eyes. He was led by hand into a man's house. And as he was there, the Bible said that God spoke to Ananias and said, Ananias, I want you to get up and go anoint and pray for Paul, Saul. One Saul of Tarsus, Lord, he's tried to kill us. He's tried to have us in prison. Lord, this man's not done anything good for us. Don't you worry about it. I've already taken care of it. I've got him. I've got him. He's spending time with me. For the last three days, he's been fasting. He's been praying. And this is something the Lord said. And he saw no man. He's been seeing me. As soon as he goes and gets prayed for, it's not just a few verses you find him preaching. The very message he was against, and now he's for. Can I tell you, that's what getting in the presence of the Lord will do for you. When you get in the presence of God and you find yourself looking at him, when you find yourself going to him, when you find yourself calling upon him and you see him, it will change and revolutionize your life. Trace, if you'll go to my message from this morning and pull up that last scripture in Psalm 121, please. It's the last, it's the last scripture that was on my message from this morning. I want to I end with this. You have to go intently into the presence of God 
with the intention to say to God, God, I'm looking to you. David said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Last verse. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. What's David saying? If you look to him, he'll keep you. If you'll get focused on him, he'll keep you. You don't have to be blinded because of disobedience. You don't have to be blinded because of fear. You don't have to be blinded because of doubt. You can spend to him, spend time with him, and when you've done that, carnality, you only want carnality in your presence. You only want folks around you that are bringing carnal things around. It will revolutionize your life. You'll begin to recognize what's going on around you. But most importantly, when you've spent time with him, you'll begin to declare that gospel, just like Paul did. You'll want to tell somebody, you don't want to know what's going on in me? Let me tell you about Jesus. You, know, you want to know what's transpired in me? Let me tell you about Jesus. And when you've got your eyes fixed on him, he's all you're going to want to talk about. Are you with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that you're watching. We talked about that this morning, God. I know that you're looking down upon us. The Bible says in Psalm 53 and 2 that there was a day that God looked down upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand that did seek him. God, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that you're looking on us. But, Lord, we need to look to you. The writer of Hebrews said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us lay aside every weight that so easily besets that we can run this race with patience. God, there is an a, a encompassing of witnesses that are all around us. And, Lord, the enemy would love to strike us with fear. The enemy would love to strike us with doubt. The enemy would love to get, cause us to walk into a place of disobedience to try to steal from us the opportunity to see you. But, Lord, I just want to I want to tell you, I love you so much. I love you so much. And I thank you for this night. In Jesus' name. Let me give you two things. Trace, if you could pull up Deuteronomy 3, 3, I believe it is. I, I may be guessing there. I know it's in the third chapter of Deuteronomy. But I want you to think about something for just a moment. Moses has seen water from a rock. Moses has seen the Red Sea part, and the enemy drowned in that Red Sea. Moses saw all these great miracles of God. I mean, he watched his rod turn into a serpent and eat the other serpents. He watched the, he watched the plagues as God told him, said, this is what I'm going to do. He watched God do these things. And as I just shared with you just a moment ago, Moses saw the hinder parts of God. And if I've got the right scripture, Trace, you probably know what I'm talking about. But the Scripture says in Deuteronomy, O oh Lord, you've just begun to show your servant your greatness. Now, folks, I'd be excited about water from a rock. I'd be excited about watching the Red Sea part and a, a multitude of millions of people walk across on dry ground and then watch the enemy be encapsulated in that sea and, 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 and God give victory. Moses saw all this, and his, his, one of his final declarations was, O oh Lord, you're just beginning to show your servant your greatness. The computer's acting up. We would just have to go, we have to wing it here. God, I'm, I'm telling you folks, we can get so enthralled and so wrapped up in what God did this morning, and it'd be easy just to sit back and rest in that and say, Oh Lord, you were so good to us. The next Sunday we can come here and we can just keep talking about next last Sunday. Oh Lord, you were so good to us. But can I tell you in all honesty, we hadn't even scratched the surface of the greatness and the outpouring of God. And one of the dangers that we have as Pentecostals, and I, I'm not ashamed to tell you, I'm a fundamental Pentecostal. I believe in the Word, 
I believe that God established the church in Pentecost. I, I believe that. I'm not throwing off on anybody else. I just believe that when Jesus built his church, he built it on, He told Peter, I'm going to build my church here. And Peter went into, on the day of Pentecost and the power of Pentecost fell. I, I believe in the power of Pentecost. But I believe, I believe with all my heart that one of the great dangers we have in Pentecost is that if we're not careful, we'll have services like we had today and we'll set up monuments. And we'll just just relish about those things. We, we've done it for years. We say things like, you remember when little granny would get to shouting and all of a sudden she'd wrap her arms around the pot belly stove and it was red hot and not even my hair on her face was singed. We'd start reminiscing. Don't you know the same God that moved on grandma to wrap her arm around a pot belly stove can still move on us today? Why, why we got to reminisce when God is still present? But we'll build monuments there, and we'll build, we'll build statues, and we'll hang plaques, and we'll say, oh, on this particular day, God did this. Brother Tony in the church of God, I mean, every, Brother Chas taking the test, Brother Chris taking the test, Brother Rogers taking the test, every, every test that an ordained minister has to go through, he has to remember that at Shear Schoolhouse, there was an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, and 100 people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And we sit there, and we say, look what happened at Shear Schoolhouse. Well, I thank God for what happened at Shearer School House. You know what I want to see? I want to see God doing it in Daystar in 2014 that people get filled with the Holy Ghost. But we can set our eyes on monuments and, and, and moments and miss what God's wanting to do today. Wasn't God good then? We almost give Him a funeral. You remember how he used to be? You remember what he used to do? And it's almost like you're speaking over him like he's dead. But God's not dead. Yes, he's still alive. And he's vibrant. And he's fervent. And he's moving. And he's healing. And he's delivering. And he's filling. And he's doing great things. Don't lose focus. Yes, 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 yes. Keep your eyes on the master. If you're going to put anybody on a pedestal, put Jesus on a pedestal. Because he said, if I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I'm a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. That's who I am. Ain't nothing special about me. I, 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 I'm in the fight with you. i just I just been afforded the opportunity to call, to be able to stand and declare what God has said. But that doesn't make me nothing special, no more special than anybody else. It's all about him, folks. That's exactly where the glory needs to go. I mean, people looked at me and said, boy, I ain't never seen you do this, that, and the other, and all this other stuff anymore. Listen, that was the Holy Ghost. Because I'll be honest with you, in my flesh, because I ain't got no sleep in the last three, four days, in my flesh, I was fighting everything I could, but God just kept giving me strength. I was looking for Brother Danny to come over and lay hands on me one time and try to pray that supernatural stuff on me again like he'd done before. I, I just kept moving. I didn't lay down because I prayed he'd come get me. Hey, Amen. you had to be there. That was in the old building. But what I'm saying to you tonight is this. Look to the hills. Look to Jesus. Find him. And I know I said I was going to close about three times already, but this is the last one, I promise. In the Song of Solomon, one of the most beautiful love stories you've ever seen in your life. In chapter 4, the Bible says, Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one glance of your eye. What that bridegroom literally said to that bride was, Honey, every time you look at me, my heart beats faster. Whew. See, I'm the bride. He's the bridegroom. And I believe every time I look toward heaven, Jesus said, Oh, they're looking at me. They're calling on me. They're believing in me. They're trusting me. Oh, Lord, I just want you to send the Holy Ghost down there and meet with them. Oh, let's love on them for a little while. Let's meet with them for a little while. Because they're looking to me. I'm their source. I'm their way. I'm the truth. I'm their life. And I'm doing it in their life. Would you stand? Because I could preach another 30 minutes. Somebody told me I had to make up for this morning because I didn't preach a message. And I, I, I tried not to do that. But what I want to say to you tonight is this. Is that there's greatness on this ministry. There's greatness on us. There's great opportunities that are before us. And we can sit and talk about what God does within here. And we can talk about it within ourselves. And we can build monuments. And we can talk about these things. Or 
We can take what God has empowered us with within these walls and take it without these walls and speak life into people who are dead. I believe God still raises the dead. But not just the dead physically, but I believe God wants to raise the dead spiritually. I heard it quoted this morning when someone was praying for me. They said, Lord, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Sons and daughters prophesy. Old men dream dreams. Young men see visions. I pull my hand, made my men service while I pull up my spirit. And that last part, as Peter declared it, all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe God can still take people that are dead in sin and trespasses and raise them up. How do I know that? Because he did it for me. And I'm not trying to give you a salvation message tonight. If you're lost tonight, you need to come and you need to call on God. And I'm telling you, just as sure as he grabbed Peter, he'll grab you tonight. He'll save you. I believe that. If you're here tonight and you're wrestling it spiritually and you're, you're, you're in conflict in your soul and, and you're battling, battling things, I'm telling you, just as sure as, as the world, if you'll just cry out, Lord, save me, he'll grab you. He'll catch you. He'll take care of you. He'll get you back to safety. He'll get you back to the boat. But what I'm looking at tonight is some hungry folks. Brother Todd told me this morning, he said, Pastor, I was up at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock this morning, something like that. He said, all I told God was, God, I just don't want a usual church service. I don't want just some singing and preaching. God, give us something supernatural. I heard from a lot of people. Whitney and Victor told me, said, we came to church and we was declaring, I'm coming expecting. I'm going to tell you something, folks. What we experienced this morning was not that I come in here with a briefcase with something special. We went, whoo, everybody get magic pixie dust, and we all shout. No, people came in hungry. People came in desperate. People came in longing, and God met with us because we had our eyes on him. What I'm saying to you is this. Don't lose focus. Avoid spiritual blindness. Allow God to speak into your life. Very simple altar call. I want us all to come together and pray. Not at your seats. Around these altars. And ask God. If there's scales on your eyes, ask God to drop the scales from your eyes. If there's disobedience, if there's fear, if there's doubt, ask God to help you with that. Ask God to change it. Ask God to take you into His presence. So that your life will be revitalized and revived. And that you'll be changed and turn around. Let God speak it to you. Let God show you His greatness. Let God show you His mighty power. That you can leave out of this place saying, God, you're just beginning to show me. Please don't stop. Please, Lord, don't let this morning just be a moment in time. But, God, let it become a lifestyle of mine. That my life will forever be changed. My life will forever be changed. Would you come and pray? As you're coming, I'm asking three men. I want three or four Holy Ghost filled men. Carmen, bring it to me. We've got Michael's resume. Michael's been sent to New York for two and a half years. He's only going to get to come home every six, seven, eight weeks. That's if they keep their promise. But Michael's, ask us, uh, Michael's asking us, Carmen's asking us to pray over his resume, that God will open a door for him. He's going to put this resume out there to get a job, that he can be with his family, be near his family, and be with his family, and be in his church. And they got to do it. I believe God can open a door. I know God can open a door. I'm not showing favoritism. Listen, if you want God to do something, you bring your resume. We'll pray over your resume. Just because my brother-in-law, you, you put it together and bring it. We'll pray over it. But we're going to pray and believe that God's going to open the door for Michael, that God's going to work this out. The rest of you, I'm asking you to come in these altars and pray and seek the face of God and ask God to have his will and his way. That God will help us to not get spiritually blind and not get off focus, but we'll keep our intentional focus to do what God would have us to do. Would you pray?
Give me some women that believe in the power of prayer. If you're not praying, you believe in the power of prayer, we're going to pray for this cancerous place that's on her. Believe for God to do a work, do a miracle. Believe in the power of prayer. If you're not praying, if you're praying, keep praying. Just keep praying.
um, share with y'all. Um, I, I don't know if all of y'all know, know, but um, I kept coming up to get prayed for because I had I was bulimic, anorexic bulimic, and I would get prayed for. Well, I would be okay. Then I'd go back and do it again and start over. Well. One, while they were at Shabbat, I wanted to go so bad, but um, God had other plans. But while the Friday night service, I was watching online, and God just began to do something in me. And I was crying, and I had to get up and go in the bathroom, and my mama was asleep. And my mama gets up, and she says, what's wrong? You know, what is wrong with you? You know, why are you crying? You know, are you okay? And I said, Mama, I'm free. And she gets up and walks into the bathroom and she was like are you for real I said yes mama she goes praise God you know and I've been free ever since then I haven't done anything and I just want to give God praise because I am proof that God can heal deliver and set free from any addiction anything and I'm you know I'm just God has you know God has done great things in me and group of ladies came to visit my mama last Tuesday and she is planning on being here Wednesday Lord willing and God's doing you know something in in her and I can just tell a difference you know she's never felt a, the love of a church like she has this church and she's like I don't know what it is but you know I, I believe that God can heal me and she's has two broke legs and she can't walk, hardly walk, but she's like, I believe God can heal me, and if God does heal me, I'm going to be shouting, and, te- you know, she just, she goes, but I'm believing, you know, I'm not giving up, so I just want to thank you, and just want to give God, testify that about, to God. God's a good God. God's a good God. He's a delivering God. Amen. You ever been delivered? Just wave at him right quick, would you? If you ever been delivered, thank God that he delivers. Amen. God's so good. Listen, don't forget, if you want to play softball, see Brother Bill in the corner. And uh, if you want to go to the men's conference next Saturday, if you've not talked to me already, let me know after the service. And uh, I'll get, I'll, i got to call them tomorrow and get that number in. Be much of prayer. 10 o'clock in the morning is my meeting with the roof guy. And uh, you be praying about that. Continue to pray about that. Believe that somewhere or another God's going to, Work this out, and he's going to get the glory. Amen? I'm believing for that. And uh, just praying for some other provisions. I, I'm, 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 I'm believing. I, I'm believing that God's going to do some great things, and he's going to get the glory. You know, I, I, I don't just pray a prayer and sit back and wait. I'm the kind of guy, I go out and, and, and start doing what I got to do. To, I, I don't want to say help God, but I want to show him that I'm serious about what I'm asking about. Now, God, I got this number in front of me, and I need you to make this happen so we can do what we need to do, Lord, you know. And uh, I, there's some things that I've been asking God about, some things I've been praying about, and, and uh, I'm ready to see God do them. And, and some of it's physical things as far as building and things like that, but then there's spiritual things, and there's, there's open doors that I'm praying for and believing for and agreeing that God's going to do. And so I'm, I'm asking you, please, to just to continue to pray, God, give direction and clarity. And so if you want to play softball back there in the corner, if you want to, uh, go to the men's conference, see me after the service. And uh, don't forget about prayer meeting tomorrow night. I'd uh, love to have you if you could come. We're just believing and trusting for God to do some great things. And uh, don't forget about uh, the CPC Bojangles night tomorrow night from 5 to 8. You're, you're blessing the kingdom when you when you do stuff for CPC. Uh, we God is blessed. I, I, as most of you probably know, I'm back on the board. I'm chairman of the board for the CPC now. Sister Paula is the executive director. But God has blessed CPC. We, we were able to transfer some funds around and do some things to, to, to see some increase. But one of the things that we're doing right now is we're wanting to go medical. 86% of abortion-minded people that get an ultrasound and see the baby that it's not just some blob or some fetus or some blob of tissue. 86% of abortion-minded women change their mind and carry the term. And so this is what we're praying for. We're praying for favor with a doctor. We need two sonographers and a nurse. We actually need four people, and we need an ultrasound machine. The ultrasound machine is $25,000. That might sound like a lot of money to you, but in Yakinville, 
a guy walked in and handed them a check for $25,000, bought them a brand new uh, ultrasound machine. And so uh, our, our dinner theater that we've got coming up in April, um, the dinner theater is basically, we're going to be showing the same movie that we showed here, The Meant to Be. The, for those of you that saw the movie, we're going to be showing it that night. And um, it's going to be held at New Vision. But the whole focus is going to be pushing to uh, help us to go medical. I think we've got somewhere around $8,000, $9,000 right now toward the $25,000. Plus, we need the doctor and the sonographers and the um, a nurse to be there. We're not supposed to be doing anything on the medical side. And so help us pray about that. And uh, like I say, if you go to the fundraiser tomorrow night, you're going to be helping support that cause. If you can't make it tomorrow night, uh, you, you've done a great job with the baby bottle blessings. I appreciate that. Sister Paula has pushed about the $5 army. She's just looking for enough people to, to, to do $5 a month. If you can do 5 bucks a month, I think there's some uh, some uh, flyers out there. She'll send you, a, every month, she'll send you an update. She'll send you a newsletter letting you know, uh, you know, what's going on at the center, needs of the center. And, and there will be a little envelope in there for you to do your $5. We're getting ready. Stephanie and Greg are getting ready to help build us a website. Um, as soon as I get the board to pass that, and uh, we're going to get it where you can donate online if you need to donate online. We're going to try to get all that uh, make it as easy and accessible as possible so that's going on tomorrow night for that of course wednesday night service uh please don't forget about that brother chris needs to meet with the parents we got a lot of meetings going on uh, if you want to play softball see brother bill real quick and then come see brother chris let him talk to you about this mission project here within the church for our young people or or, or somehow or another we'll work this out but uh please see them and uh, don't forget about that and don't forget about the other things that are going on some of this stuff's going on over the next few weeks, so I'm not going to go through that stuff again. So I appreciate you being in the Lord's house.